In his magnificent history of immigration and what he calls the alchemy of race, Yale historian Matthew Fry Jacobson describes the 20th century in terms of two simultaneous racial developments. Prior to the 20th century, there had been a ranking of Europeans such that whiteness and, in, and its encodings for power and privilege was reserved for Anglo-Saxons and denied to the likes of Eastern Europeans and Jews. However, in the 20th century, there emerged what Jacobson calls multi-ethnic pan-whiteness, that now imagined whiteness inclusive of even Eastern Europeans and Jews. This pan-whiteness did require, as a prerequisite, that those who desire to, do, to become white first do two things. First, they had to shed identity markers in ways that made them not white. For example, using whitening cosmetics to hide skin colors of the Eastern European or discarding the ethnic practices of Jews and their religious beliefs. Second, they had to perpetuate acts of discrimination and violence against non-whites in order to prove they had become white. In other words, shedding of ethnic identity and committing violence against non-whites purchased one's passage into whiteness. This led to a second development for Jacobson. At the same moment that this multi-ethnic pan-whiteness came into existence, a new outsider was created, namely those unable to shed ethnic identity and those unwilling to do violence against blacks. The allowance of the passage into whiteness simultaneously placed an abatross upon those unable to pass into whiteness. Violence and discrimination against those unable or unwilling to pass into whiteness was now justified on the grounds of that inability or unwillingness. I fear that for the Asian American church, something of these realities are starting to come into play. The development of multi-ethnic pan-Asian communities, similar to the development of multi-ethnic pan-whiteness, operates according to the same logic and involves the same political capital. Asian Americans prove they are Asian Americans over against Asians by shedding Asian markers, for example, by working as hard as possible to get rid of their Asian accents. The goal here is to free yourselves of anything that marks you as distinctively ethnic. I think here of one of my former students, Yen Huang, a young Vietnamese American woman. Recently, Yen changed her name to Kimberly because she was told constantly that Yen was a difficult name to pronounce. So now she is Kimberly Huang. Well, Yen, now Kimberly, was also recently engaged. And her, fi her fiancé's last name is Dill. And so she came to lament as she realized that within a few short years, she would have gone from Yen Huang to Kimberly Dill. Yen Huang, a name that is obviously Vietnamese, Kimberly Dill, a name shorn of any ethnic Asian identity whatsoever. In a sense, her Asianness will have disappeared through her name. Within Jacobson, Jacobson's continuum, this is just the first move. The second move is then to perpetuate violence over and against. Hence, Asian Americans prove they are Asian American by making fun of Asians who, ca who cannot help but speak with accents. For lots of us second and third generation Asian Americans, making fun of and mocking first generation Asian Im immigrants, very often our own parents, becomes a rite of passage of leaving behind Asianness and becoming Asian American. I validate my <coughs> membership within Asian America by doing violence to non-Asian Americans, which includes whites, blacks, and Mexicans, and others. Let me offer another example. It has become a common practice for Asian Americans to make money by establishing businesses that glean off the surface of the urban poor, basically making money off of their desperation. We do this without ever investing in their local economies or working on their infrastructures. We simply want to use them for the desperation that comes out in our profit. We refuse to befriend them, though. We build our wig shops and our liquor stores and our convenience stores and our cleaners in their communities, but our houses and our churches in other communities, as if they're only there for the sake of our profit. 
It is through violence against Mexicans and blacks that we show the rest of America we are better than Mexicans and blacks, and by doing so, gain approval into white America.